Just a little uh, recap, that uh, peak there is uh, Penarole Wen. And I'm just going to pan round. There's plenty of people here today, they're everywhere, but then I knew that, so I can't complain. That's a uh, little peak here called the Gribbin, and behind that is Shinbok Lewis. 
a lake up there and uh, over there of a popular climbing venue known as the uh, Idwell Slabs and there's uh, a little bit of a stream coming down the hillside there I'll just zoom in there you can see uh, a path that goes along there I walked that in the 80s in the early 80s and uh, it goes up there what's known as locally as the Devil's Kitchen on the top of the summit there there's a little lake called uh, Llinacoon I walked up there once full load rucksack been camping out and it was awful I swore I'd never ever walked up that path again in fact um, when I got to the top I pulled my boots off and stuck my feet into the cold water of Llinacoon and that swear steam came off the water <laughs> my feet were so hot it's probably not as bad as uh, I make out now but uh, I did say at the time I'm never going to walk that way again and uh, this is um, Coombidwell, Coombe being the, this little valley carved out by ice and this is the uh, lake that's left behind impounded by um, uh, a layer of uh, what they call moraine uh, loose stones and that which have uh, left a, a pool behind them which is filled with glacial water there's a, a path right around this lake but um, I haven't been here for nearly 40 years uh, since the last time I came here and the reason I came here last time and the reason I came here today is because of and I'll zoom in because I'm going over there in a bit I can get there that's right stone wall in the uh, mid 80s I came here with a work party I was on a um, a two week long um, dry stone walling course I was into my dry stone walling uh, years ago the art of building walls with no uh, mortar and they stand up for two three hundred years but that was one of the walls I worked on so somewhere in that section if it hasn't fallen down and been rebuilt by somebody else is uh, a section of wall that I built uh, or reconstructed rather the walls been there a long time there was uh, about 25 was I think on the course from all over Britain and uh, it was run by the then organisation called the British Trust for Conservation Volunteers it's still going actually and uh, this is the first time I've been back to this wall I'll be going over there later and uh, have a bit of reminiscing that's the uh, main reason for coming here today. This is the um, reason I've come here today, yeah, partly to reminisce really, and it's this wall down there is um, a little kissing gate. I'm going back nearly 40 years now but in the mid 80s I helped uh, rebuild this wall. It goes up there to that uh, rock buttress. We worked on the first half of it. So somewhere along here is a piece of wall, a section of wall that I built. And I always remember it was quite funny. Um, I've just re remembered now we were having our buddies up there somewhere. Or having a break or something. And that kissing gate wasn't there then. I can't remember what was there but it might have been a, a ladder style or something. And just there, just a few yards up from that... Um, uh, kissing gate there was a section of wall there and they'd um, been they'd lowered it as they were rebuilding it so there was a bit of a gap in the wall and this bunch of uh, walkers came along and uh, took a shortcut rather than 
go over what I seem to think was a ladder style. They marched across the grass and then walked over the workings of the wall that one of the um, the people on the course was there uh, doing. I remember people in our group shouting abuse at them. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing sort of thing. Uh, oh, sorry, you know, idiots. They saw an opportunity and they took it. Instead of climbing up and down over the, a ladder style, they thought, oh, there's a gap in the wall there. And they trod all over the the work of whoever was uh, working on that section. But um, some um, these people are all walking down here. Uh, there's a path up there, and uh, above there is a, a lake called Chiambox Lewis, and uh, it's been in the news in recent times because uh, of the controversy over uh, English people changing the names of uh, Welsh um, place names uh, which of course I think should be a crime but nonetheless uh, all these walkers and uh, they can't be uh, asked to uh, try and get the tongue and try around and try and remember you know, something like Bochlywood which has been the name for that lake up there for about 5,000 years and all of a sudden they've decided to call it Lake Australia and because uh, if you stand if you're on a cliff higher up again you look down it's actually the lake's roughly the shape of australia so these uh, people have been writing blogs and writing books and writing articles and magazines and instead of saying schlimbox fluid which is opposed to they put lake australia and it catches on and within a generation you've got hundreds of thousands of people all calling this lake um, or other features um, by a name, anything but the real name. It's just an attack on um, Welsh history, Welsh culture, and Welsh language. And uh, these are the people who have the reputation for turning their rural of Wales into a, a playground for themselves. And it's uh, far from that. But uh, nonetheless, that's the path comes down there, there, and um, that's what those people were on them. <coughs> Um, yeah, so I work on a section of this wall, and uh, it was one of the wall sections I worked on, as I say, on a, 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 one particular course I was on. I went on several courses, and uh, they were quite useful. So, um, when I first started working myself, I did a bit of uh, patching up work for farmers and that. And uh, I don't think I would have liked to have become a full-time dry stone wall man. But again, I, uh, I was interested in things like hedge laying. I did a bit of that as well. Went on all sorts of courses and I and actually did some of the work later on in uh, my working life. Any deer fencing, stuff like that. It's... Um, I don't recall this, um, I'm pretty certain this wire on top of the wall was not here in the 80s and I strongly suspect that um, someone has come back and uh, put this all in. I just don't remember it, it may have been. But I certainly don't remember it. It was just a wall. And um, I was say it does look a bit moth eaten, but then I'm looking at the um, the wire stretches up there. The wire that joins the uh, sections of wire together and pulls them together. And that barbed wire. Now, let's see. Hmm barbed wire lasts a long time but that isn't rusted away that's probably less than 20 years old so maybe this wasn't here but here then so, um, nonetheless I'm reminiscing <laughs> and wittering on might not look like something but I get quite excited about this Dry stone walls, lots of different styles in Britain. 
and of course master craftsman we had a master craftsman there uh, teaching us remember the guy's name old guy from Bethesda called um, Alou Jones his name was nice guy be long dead now I imagine he was old when he was teaching us <laughs> yeah so after nearly 40 years I'm back I suspect the section of wall I was working on was somewhere here. We didn't go to the top, we were only doing the first half. As I say, when those uh, people came through and walked all over someone else's work, being the smart characters that they were, I know there were quite a few of them hailed abuse down the hillside, but probably on that knoll there, little flat bit there, we were having our sandwiches or tea break or whatever it was. Yeah. Quite impressed now. Glad I came.